China is now the world's largest car market and car makers are listening to and designing toward Chinese sensibilities, uh, even pandering to. You find the ceramic or something is really Chinese, you just plaster the same thing in the interior, that's not a way to do it. And that becomes cliche and um, more of a kind of an insult almost. And there are so many Chinese, indeed so many rich Chinese, on the order of one million millionaires in the country. The dragon will change the car world profoundly, and one hopes for the better. At the moment, Chinese big spenders are obsessed with Western luxury brands and the European-defined vernacular of prestige. What we've learned so far, Chinese society is passing through an awkward and vulgar adolescence with money. The ancient obsession with face, that is, the centrality of prestige, status, and respect, has collided head-on with Western conspicuous consumption. Indeed, in car design, face has the force of literalism. China, and Japan especially, the headlamps are the eyes, so the windscreen is redundant. Well, then there's a complete difference in the proportion where the eyes, you know, eyes, nose, mouth of a human face um, compared with the eyes, nose, mouth on what you'd, you'd think the Chinese or the Japanese would see as a face. You already see signs of the Chinese influence. More recognizability in the front end of the car, which is to say chrome. Big grills, lots of it. Just as in the West, the mid-level manager wants to at least drive like the boss. For The Wall Street Journal, I'm Dan Neal.